Hello animators and welcome back to my game animation workshop. In the last episode, we built a run animation and at the end of it, we had our character running and idling. We had sort of set up two states so that when you're moving, you play that run animation we made and when you stop, you play that idle animation. But you probably noticed that when you start moving and when you stop, they kind of just happen instantly and the, the engine just sort of figures out that blend a little bit for us. It's not super pretty. So what we're gonna focus on in this episode is transitional animations. These animations are pretty much exactly what they sound like. They're a handcrafted animation that deals with the transition between two states. The transitional animation that I'm gonna focus on today is a stop animation. So that moment where you're running and you let up on the key and your character stops, instead of going directly into idle, we're gonna have it trigger a special animation that we make to seamlessly segue between those two states. Now, transitional animations are a tool you can use all over your character. They're one of the easiest ways to sort of increase the animation fidelity of any game. You know, games like Assassin's Creed or Ori and the Blind Forest that have this sort of beautiful flowing movement. One of the ways they achieve that is by creating hundreds or maybe even thousands of transition animations between every one of those little states, between moving and stopping. When your character pivots and goes back and forth, they have a special animation for that. When they jump in the air and do an attack from the air versus an attack on the ground or landing after jumping, depending on whether you're idling or moving. And you can kind of see that this spider webs out and you could build thousands and thousands and thousands of transitional animations. Now, that sounds really scary, and some companies and some games do do that, and let's be fair, their games look better and more high quality for it. But there's also a lot of games at the other end that you know kind of pick and choose their battles. And that's where I like to be and where I like to think about is where can we create transitional animations that create the highest value for us? Do a kind of audit of our animation and say, hey, where are the areas that look bad because we don't have a transition? And try to focus there first and only really focus on those really specific cases if there's something you see a lot and you feel like is going to affect the player's perceived uh, uh, quality of the game at the end of the day. So in this episode, we're gonna focus a little bit more on the engine side than the animation side this time. I am gonna show you kind of how I set up the animation and a little bit of the authoring and exporting because it's a little bit different for this specific animation, but primarily we're gonna focus on building that transitional state and kind of getting it all to blend seamlessly when we trigger it in our animation graph. So let's hop into Maya first. We're gonna set up our animation scene and then we'll move on to Unreal after that. And hopefully by the end of this, our run and idle will look a little bit smoother when we transition between them. For the setup for this scene, we wanna basically recreate this scenario that's going to happen in Unreal in Maya. So we wanna start with our run pose and then at the end of our scene as sort of our starting setup, have a full loop of our idle animation to sort of simulate going from that run animation into that idle animation. And we're just gonna leave some space between it in our scene to kind of do our transitional animation. In. So I've opened up the idle animation here. And the very first thing we're gonna do is bake this down. We build this all in a very sort of complicated way using layers and whatnot. And we just wanna blow all that away and, and save out a version of this that's, that's a baked version that we can use just as, as a simplified version of it in this transitional animation. So I've opened up this idle scene and you can see here that we have all these breathing layers that we created in the previous episode. I'm gonna start by unlocking all of these and then I'm gonna use shift, hold down shift to select them all and then right click and we're gonna merge all these layers. What that's gonna do is you'll see here in a moment, it's gonna start ticking across the timeline and it's going to take all the keys on all those layers and sort of merge them down into a single layer with keys across the whole thing. And we're not too worried at this point about that being uneditable because we're not editing the idle animation in this scenario. We're just kind of using it as a reference uh, in our current scene. So you can see there that uh, it seems like, let's select all our joints just to make sure, uh, it seems like it baked it all down. Let's see if we turn off all these layers and just make sure. It does look like everything is now down here onto this, okay? So let's now uh, delete out these layers from the scene. And we should just have everything. We can kind of pull up our graph editor to just make sure we have curves and stuff that we expect here. Do to do, let me hit G again. Oh, where's my graph editor? 
oh, here it is. It's hidden off my screen, invisible down here in the no man's land. There we go. Uh, so if we select everything, you can see that there is stuff across all these curves, and it seems pretty much like we'd expect. Now, I wanna get rid of these extra bits that kind of extended over the end. So I'm just gonna right here in my graph editor, clean this all up just so we have a nice clean baked scene to work with. And I'm selecting the curves that went over the ends of this uh, and just hitting delete to delete them out. Now this should leave us with uh, a sort of baked out version of this scene. And by baked, I mean it just has keys all the way across it. And just to be sure that it is truly baked and we don't mess anything up, I'm gonna shift select this entire timeline and do one more uh, stop gap here. I'm gonna go to edit, keys and click bake simulation and what that's going to do is it's just going to go and literally key everything i have selected on every single uh frame in this uh, animation okay uh and so now our graph editor should uh look uh oh like it's got keys across everything i noticed that there was some that just had a key here and a key there it's baked everything on every frame which is exactly what we want for now Okay, so we're gonna close out of the graph editor. And then what I'm gonna do next is extend this timeline out to like 200, just to give us a little bit of space. I'm gonna grab all of these and pull them down to this end. And this is gonna kind of be our idle end, okay? Uh, and what we're gonna do then is grab a run pose to slot in at this other end. And that'll leave us a nice little space here to work in for our transitional animation. Okay, so I'm gonna save this scene out as, let's call this uh, nav, and we will call this stop transition. Okay, we'll save that out. And now we're gonna to go to our run animation. Do, 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 do. Let's go to open scene and find our uh, final run here. You can say, don't save. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab a pose that's sort of mm, one of the more neutral poses in the run. And we're just gonna, we're not actually going to use that pose specifically because we don't actually know when you're gonna stop exactly what pose you're gonna come from in the run animation. That's one of the tricky things about stops. So what we're gonna use this run pose for is to mostly get kind of the gesture of the body uh, into that stop scene so that we just have a sort of reference point of the of the overall body shape and pose that we're gonna come from and transition into our idle one. So here's our run animation. I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have to uh, bake all these down so that I can copy a clean pose from this. We'll just merge the layers. And you wanna make sure that if you're merging these layers and baking these all out, that you don't accidentally save over your, your original scene and sort of destroy that whole scene by baking it all down, okay? So just be very careful when you're doing this kind of baking stuff that you don't end up kind of destroying that base scene that you created, okay? So we merged all that. I'm gonna turn off all these layers here now that no longer have anything on them. And I'm gonna kind of just pick, I don't know, like one of the passing poses um, since they're a little bit more neutral. So maybe like this pose here at 11. Uh, and like I said, it doesn't super matter what pose you grab from here because you really could transition from any pose in this animation into your stop. So I selected everything. I hit my select all and I set a keyframe here just to make sure that everything was keyed. And then I'm gonna shift and copy this, okay? Oh, I should uh, shift and then right click and hit copy to copy that whole pose while I have everything selected, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to my stop transition scene. We don't want to save this, okay? Because that will destroy all the hard work we did in that original scene. Uh, and then we're going to paste this pose right into uh, our new scene. As soon as it opens, okay, we're gonna select all again and you can just use the uh, select all from the picker. Like I noted in the last time, I have a hotkey for it, but you can use these selection uh, groups up here to select all the body and whatnot if you don't have a hotkey for that. I'm gonna set a key here at zero and then I'm gonna right click and hit paste to paste in that pose that we grabbed. And you can see there that now we have a run pose and then we have a whole looping animation. 
And there's some wonkiness in between that we gotta figure out. It's probably here in the graph editor. Yeah, it's just about how our, uh, our curves are set up here. So let's select all these and turn on uh, uh, the auto tangent here to just try to get something that makes a little bit more sense. And you can see what we have here now is essentially a slow motion version of what we see in game right now, uh, which is that it just sort of interps between those two poses, right? And we are gonna go ahead and create a very simple animation to make that a little bit more believable. So I'm gonna stop with the setup there and then give you a couple tips on how to make this animation feel pretty good. And actually I lied, that's not where the setup is going to end because I thought of one way that we could actually make this scene a little bit more usable. And that's by actually adding a whole loop of the run in at the beginning as well and actually putting that translation in our scene to sort of replicate the character moving through space and coming to a stop pretty much exactly like it is in the game. Now I wouldn't necessarily advise to do this this much setup every time, but if this is your first time doing this uh, kind of animation, this will just be really helpful in you sort of transferring that momentum uh, into your transitional animation. So I opened back up my run animation, I baked it all out again, uh, and just so I didn't have to do this again in the future, you'll notice I saved this out as a new scene called Run F Baked. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the entire animation and copy it this time. We'll go back to our scene here, um, our transition animation. Uh, I'll actually save that now that it is its own new baked version of it that we can reuse over and over later on. As soon as this scene opens up, we'll paste this whole sequence in there at the beginning and then actually add in our, uh, our movement on our, on our route to sort of replicate exactly what's gonna happen in the game. Okay, so how I'm gonna deal with this is I'm actually gonna go into the negative frames here. Let's go to negative 20, um, and I'm going to uh, select all again, go here to negative 20, and set a keyframe on everything, and then paste in all of those frames, okay? Let's delete out that last little guy there that we had. And I'm gonna shift this frame-wise by middle click dragging all of those over to start at frame zero, okay? So we now have a whole loop of our run. And let's grab this uh, and we want, so I looked in the game, I, was, I went and I looked in the game to see does the character have any kind of drift when they stop? And right now it's set up so that when the character stops, they come to a complete stop pretty much instantly the moment you let your hand off. So uh, that's how we're going to make this look in this setup as well. Um, we're gonna set a keyframe on the root here at zero. I'm gonna delete out the rest of these. And then back here, since it's easiest to do this um, on a second one second loop we'll go back to 30 uh negative 30 here and set another frame you'll see why i'm doing this in a moment so that then we can open up our graph editor here look at the translate z curve and now we have an exactly one second interval here to work with to get the forward motion built in and instead of actually going and driving this forward, pushing this up so that our character's moving forward in space, I'm gonna do the exact opposite and think of it like, oh, the character's kind of like starting back a little ways and kind of coming up to origin. So we'll select this very first key here and make this value negative 600, because if I recall, I believe our character moves at exactly 600 centimeters per second and we'll make that a linear curve, okay? So that the character comes linearly in at 600 centimeters per second and then suddenly stops just like it will in our game. So let's downsize this and see what this looks like. You can see the character runs in and then they're gonna stop on a dime and we're gonna have to figure out what the animation actually looks like there, okay? Uh, I'm going to crop this timeline as my final thing here to negative 18, just so we get that, uh, just that loop of the run. And then this will be the space that we're gonna work within for our new animation. All right, so let's get going on this animation. Uh, I was looking at my idle pose and just thinking about the body mechanics of this. The character kind of has this left foot at the back. And so if I think about in my head how I as a character would stop, kind of like which foot would be hitting the ground first. Uh, 
you know, I believe that the character would sort of come down with that right foot first, step past with the left foot, and then sort of adjust that, uh, you know, that backmost foot back into the final position. So that's going to be kind of what I aim for. So I'm going to start in this this animation more so than the previous ones. I'm going to do a little bit more of a traditional pose to pose approach. I'm not going to actually animate it in step mode though. I really like just working in spline, so I sort of have this built in. Uh, uh, sort of polish a little bit already like I'm thinking about the polish even as I'm animating it because I'm seeing all the frames okay so the very first thing I'm going to do is actually grab a pose that's kind of somewhere I'm just going to use the the frames I have you're kind of scrub through and grab something that's kind of favoring my idle pose a little bit somewhere here around 60 and set a keyframe and drag this back and this is going to be kind of my first uh, pose that I'm going to work with uh, I'm going to grab the two feet here, though, and what I'm going to do, or I'm going to at least grab this uh, back foot, because that's the one I said that we want to contact first, right? And I'm going to copy its exact position from the idle pose. And I did that by clicking here and then middle mouse dragging over to here. That that copies the, the pose that I drag from to the new location. And then when I get there, set it as a keyframe. And you can see now that that position is exact in space there. Now. I think that what I actually want, though, is for this to initially land kind of out here, kind of sweep out in front to catch uh, catch him, and then step back once that forward foot uh, uh, lands behind. So I'm going to kind of zero out this heel here. And I want to actually have this foot on this pose still kind of sweeping through from the run, OK? Uh, something like that and you can kind of see I'm imagining that this will kind of be the first pose when you stop and then we will lift up this foot afterwards and bring it back into that plant position okay so what we need now I'm, I'm just focusing on the feet kind of as a starting point and I'll go back and do a little bit of a pass on the body but this foot is planted here now and we want to keep it planted until this other foot also comes in and lands in its new position as well okay so here it comes through it's going to sweep through land in its position and i guess i want to um, copy the heel onto this foot too so it doesn't get all wonky sweep through and then we're going to pick up this foot and bring it back to its final location so i'm just i'm not worried about timing at all right now i'm just thinking about the literal motion of the the feet here okay so then the character is going to kind of pick this foot up and start bringing it back into its final location like this there we go and i'm just going to copy another one of these over here i'm just middle mouse dragging it and then setting a key and if I just sort of play this, I know the timing is going to be a little bit wonky, but physically it's kind of what I'm imagining already, right? Uh, it's that this foot gets planted, the other foot swings through lands, and then the character steps back into the final position. Now let's start posing out the rest of the body. Uh, when the character initially comes in, because they were you know, sweeping in through this, I'm going to ignore my friend requests there. Uh, the character is coming in pretty hot. And when they land, I think I actually want to have him kind of, you know, lean, leaning back like he suddenly comes in and kind of leans back to catch himself to skid out uh, into this final pose. OK, so we'll kind of come in leaning back. And you can see here now that, you know, the momentum is going to carry him forward a little bit. And then probably he's going to kind of overshoot this as he steps back. And that kind of makes sense with the weight that's happening, right? He's bringing himself forward over this foot that he just planted here as he picks up this other foot and brings it back, okay? And I'm going to copy this pose again because he's not going to take his body all the way back and, like... He's going to plant this foot first, and then the body's going to follow behind it a little bit. Okay, so what I want is a frame here where he's starting to head back in this direction over this planted foot, but hasn't quite reached there yet. Can I see that? So the foot leads the action, and then once it's planted, 
then the body catches up. And I might even push that a little bit further where this is still forward even a little bit more. Okay. Now I can see already that this pose I made here, this leaning back, it's probably not gonna work. It doesn't transition well between these two poses. Um, so I think I might change my mind here and actually uh, kind of keep him lean forward in this initial uh, pose here to try to blend from that run a little bit more and then only have him sort of come up uh, as he gets more forward. Okay. Now I'm gonna take all these frames, I selected everything, and I'm gonna bring it back over here because one of the things that's gonna happen in the game is that this transition is gonna be pretty much instantaneous, okay? And I know it's gonna look a little bit wonky in Maya, but I wanna uh, focus on kind of keeping the momentum carried through. And so I am gonna think about the timing of these frames a little bit now, and we can see that it's way too slow. This character's moving at like breakneck speed and then they suddenly stop and this forward motion peters out really, really uh, quickly. So uh, I'm going to ha move these over to try to capture some of that speed a little bit by condensing these way down to something that's more reasonable, okay? Now, once the character sort of catches their momentum forward, you know, we can cushion out really slowly back uh, you know, back into the idle, but we want to make sure that when the character stops, that the forward motion here on this route kind of roughly matches, uh, you know, how fast the character was moving. And I might even have to push this forward a little bit more. And maybe, you know, I'm kind of thinking that based off of how fast the character is going, maybe we need to even overshoot with this other foot because as far as I've had to push this character forward, this foot doesn't seem like it's out far enough in front of the character. So let's try uh, adding, like pushing this out in front a little bit more. We'll copy it over so that its plant position is actually out in front a little bit more. And then after we'll have a final little tiny foot adjustment where this foot also slides back right here at the end something like that. And we can maybe even uh, lift this up a tiny bit in a in-between frame here. Okay, and I think that that is kind of roughed out what we want. Let's kind of play it and see. Okay, it's starting to feel like something. Now I'm gonna try to uh, now also use some up and down on the body here to cushion out, uh, you know, like when you stop as a person, you kind of come down, you, 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 you come down lower to the ground and then stand up into your stop pose. So I want to capture that a little bit. Um, and as the character is coming forward and planting themselves on this foot, that they're actually coming down into a sort of lower pose. And then only at the end are they kind of coming back up into that final uh, idle pose. I'm gonna not have all this idle play so that we can kind of see this at a little bit more of a rapid speed here when we're playing it. Okay. Now, the other thing, um, you know, as far as just a starting block out, this is already starting to feel reasonably well. Um, so the last thing I'm gonna focus on here uh, is just kind of getting the uh, arm to also uh, kind of follow through in this action. Um, they're gonna kind of drag behind a little bit, and I'm just gonna work on them all at once here and then swing through into a more forward position. I'm just gonna delete this keyframe in here and let these kind of do what they will between. Um, and then we'll just allow them to kind of drift back into their final position. And I'll work on making the like actual overlap and stuff feel all good at the end, but as a starting point, uh, something like that 
might be pretty good. And I might use, I'm gonna use this little tween machine tool here um, to uh, d try to get something that's a little bit, uh, oops. Uh, uh, oh no, <laughs> shouldn't have used that. I, I do have it and I, it seems like my login expired. So I guess I won't use that tool for the moment being. Uh, I wanted to grab the sort of fist position uh, from the previous frame, but for now, I'll just do what I was doing before here. Uh, so let's bring this kind of back and I'll just select all the hand here and copy it manually from this previous pose. And we'll keep it in the fist until it sort of swings forward and then we'll have the fingers come out um, sort of in this section, okay? And you can kind of extrapolate how using some of the techniques we used in the other animations, I'll eventually take that motion that's all sort of happening on that arm all at once and sort of feather it out so that it's, you know, swinging the, the upper arm first, then the elbow, and then the wrist out after, okay? Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing with this other arm. Uh, and this is kind of interesting because in like a lot of other animations we've done so far, we've tried to like isolate this weighted um, weapon quite a bit. But because this is really heavy in this animation, I think it's going to swing through maybe even more than the uh, than the other arm is going to because of the weight of it. So I'm going to start with it being kind of back like this and then have it um, really swing up and then swing back and unlike that other arm well i guess we'll have it you know not get back to its final position until way over here and then when i'm kind of polishing this i might actually even have it kind of overshoot past because it's so heavy um, we can kind of block that out even now here if i add another frame over there i can have it actually come back past and kind of feather out into its final position, something like that. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to focus on is kind of blocking out the spine on these key poses that we have. Okay. So I'm going to have the character come in just sort of as they are. Uh, and let me think about what the motion's going to be. I think they'll actually kind of lean forward more a little bit and not stand up quite so straight until the very end here. I'm not quite sure that's what I want. Let me play it and see. That doesn't look too bad. Um, and then once I kind of get the rest of the motion in, let's just work on the head a tiny bit. Um, I'm just kind of uh, trying to get the feel for things here. This will kind of like come forward as the character. I'm thinking about it being kind of like a little bit behind the body. So as, as the body is coming forward, the head drags a little bit and then overshoots down just a little bit uh, to just kind of make it feel a little loose and more natural. Uh, and similarly, it's going to kind of drag and take a little bit of time to come up here at the end. Okay. Okay, now this isn't perfect by any means, but it is kind of the block out that I would start with. And now I'm gonna go off screen and just do a little bit of like polish on this using some of the same techniques we did in the previous episodes to get the overlap and everything feeling really good. And I'll kind of loop back around and show you the final version and talk about how I blend it into our idle uh, animation here at the end and then we'll export it and get into the game. So I spent about 20 minutes uh, polishing up this animation just to kind of get it in a good enough place to get it in game. And I used mostly the techniques that we used in the idle and the run, kind of taking those, those poses that I had blocked out and just using offsets to kind of offset 
starting at the top of each chain, you know, like the top of the arm, then the elbow, then the wrist. And I worked out starting at the center core of the body, kind of went up the spine, then out the arms in the same way that I did in all those previous animations. Now, a couple things noting that I changed, you know, after thinking about it a little bit more uh, to just kind of add a little bit of extra uh, uh, interest and asymmetry to the animation is you notice that I uh, torqued the uh, the spine around this way, added a little bit of twist to it as the stop happens. Um, I felt like our, the original poses I had in there kind of were only happening in one axis. And so adding that little twist in there helped not only make it feel a little bit more asymmetrical, but uh, helped sell the weight of the the weapon a little bit too. And that the character kind of twists around uh, uh, with the weight of the weapon as it comes forward. So that was one area that I think I kind of improved from the block out. The other is um, I took a little bit of time on the steps themselves to have these initial foot plants land at a little bit of a closer in location to, you know, if you're running straight ahead and you stop suddenly, you don't put your feet out wide. You actually put your feet kind of in a line in front of you. You go, do do and then you would step outward into your final locations, right? Because you're trying to stop your momentum forward. You're not cared about stabilization in this direction. You're cared about stabilization in that forward direction. So I pulled those feet uh, kind of inward on that initial plant. And then only when the character steps back into the final position, do the legs kind of um, push out. And you can kind of see that if I scrub through here. So on those initial plants, they're kind of closer in towards the center. And then as they step they, uh, back into the final positions, the character steps out, okay? Um, so almost all of this was just achieved through uh, offsetting from my poses uh, with just a little bit of additional noodling here and there. I did add a little bit of animation on the hand so that the fingers opened up at a uh, more interesting place. Um, and I did a little bit of straight ahead animation on this arm to get it to kind of feel like how I wanted it. Um, but really, uh, you know, if you have a pretty solid idea of what you're working for, you can kind of feel out a lot of the biomechanics starting at the feet and moving your way up through the body. Um, so that is kind of it. And next we're going to talk about how to get this to blend seamlessly into our idle animation. All right, we've got our animation all finished up. We build a nice crossfade. It all blends, at least in Maya, perfectly smoothly. So the last step is to prepare this scene and export it into an FBX that we can put into the game, okay? Now, we wanna make sure we clip this in the right spot, so I'm gonna just run you through this process, even though we've done exporting quite a bit before, just to make sure that we get it exactly right so that we have the right asset clipped to the right place perfectly for implementing it into the game. So we're ready to put this asset in the game. The last thing we want to do is just make sure that our timeline and everything is cropped to just the animation bit that we want for our transition in game. We basically want to uh, kind of crop out our run animation portion and make sure that we don't have any lingering frames at the end. So when we set this up in Unreal, it all blends seamlessly, okay? So we're gonna focus down here on the timeline um, and we wanna make sure that we are starting exactly on the first frame of our stop animation, which in my case is frame one. So let's clip this timeline here all to frame one as our starting point. Make sure that that is indeed not like the first, not one of the frames from your run, but the first frame from your stop animation. First frame from, man, what an alliteration there. First frame from your stop animation, okay? And then we wanna do the same thing at the end. We wanna go through and find where the exact last frame of our idle animation here is on our breathe blend uh, uh, layer. And that seems to be frame 141, okay? So let's now crop all this to 141. And if we scrub through now, we should have our just our stop animation and our one cycle of breathe at the end. And this is exactly what we are going to export. Um, so just a reminder, I know I've run through this a lot of times, but to export our animation, we wanna go in here into the outliner and grab our export group. And just before we do this, just to make sure we should probably save our scene since we just made some more changes to it. And then we're gonna go through and click export selection. 
Yep, we want an FBX. And the big thing you want to make sure of for this animation, since we did kind of uh, crop it, is that the frame range here actually matches what's down here on your timeline. And this is important because if you happen to have like extra space beyond the timeline down here that uh, you know, if, for example, I was to drag, I can actually show this, if I was to drag this bar like this, and it, even though this timeline might be snapped to the right duration, the default there is that it will default, default to exporting the maximum duration of frames, which is why I made sure that my maximum and minimums were also 1 and 141, okay? So let's go through that one more time, export selection, yep. Make sure that that matches. Make sure you have bake animation selected and that your animation is actually exporting. And let's call this idle, or we'll call this nav. Uh, what did we name our Maya file? Stop transition. That makes a lot of sense. And we'll export it. Okay. And that is it for the uh, Maya portion of this. And so we're gonna hop over to Unreal now. As promised, it's time to move to Unreal and learn a little bit more about how to build a transitional state in our animation state machine. But the first thing we're gonna do is actually make sure that our animation imported into Unreal correctly and just kind of compare it to our Maya scene to make sure that it all looks good so that before we get into the blueprinting portion of it, we actually make sure that our asset looks correct. Now we're gonna hop straight into our animation blueprint, get into that state machine and actually add a stop state, a transitional state between our run and our idle. And hopefully by the end of this, we're gonna have something that looks pretty slick. So let's go into Unreal. All right, so I went through the importing process and rotated our character just like we had to do for all the previous animations. And here's what we ended up with in Unreal. It looks pretty good. It looks very close to what we animated in Maya. So we're gonna hop straight into the blueprint now and start building out that transitional state. All right, so straight from this previewer, we're just gonna go right over here and click our blueprint tab to navigate directly to our associated animation blueprint for the skeleton. Now, once again, if when you open it up, it looks like this, that means you're in the event graph and not the animation graph. Today, we're gonna to be working primarily in the animation graph because we wanna edit this state machine that we created last time. So let's click on into this and just do a little refresher of what we built last time. We have our idle animation and our run animation, and then we have these transitional rules that we created for is moving and is not moving. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a little bit of space here and we're actually gonna create a new state. And instead of run going directly through or directly back to idle, it's going to route instead through a stop state and then into idle, okay? So let's right click and add a new state and we can call this stop. And inside of this, we wanna add our stop animation, okay? So let's click in there and you can actually drag right off of this and we'll search for stop and it will hopefully contextually find your animation if you named it smartly. Okay, now the other thing we wanna look at here is we wanna make sure that we uncheck this loop animation tag. We actually wanted that for the cases of our idle and our run, but in the case of the stop, we don't want it to keep looping. We want it to be like a one and done. Once it fires off and completes, we actually want it to end and then transition into our idle animation, right? So we wanna unselect this so that this plays only one time through. And then we're gonna go back up to our state machine here. Okay, you can actually navigate using these top tabs here, kind of in and out of the states. Now, we're gonna end up getting rid of this rule, but first let's start building our transitional rules uh, between idle, or sorry, run, stop, and then idle. First, let's go from run to stop. And this rule is actually gonna replace the currently existing rule we have, which is not moving. So we can actually just copy this completely using Control Z, and then let's hop back out and then go into this one and do a control V. So we're saying, if you're not moving, you should stop, right? And then, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because what we want, the rule that we want to go into idle is basically like, is our stop finished, right? Like we want to sense, is our stop done playing? If so, we want to start transitioning back into our idle animation. So how do we sense that? Well. The developers of Unreal Engine were actually pretty smart. They actually created a specific 
type of transition rule for this exact case, okay? So if we create a new transition between here and go into it, we'll find that there's actually a contextual um, piece of info that was created here. And if we right click, we can search for time remaining and you'll see it gives you a bunch of options to sense what time is remaining on the animation from the previous state that we just came from, from that stop state, okay? And you can do it in a couple different ways. You can do it, you can get sort of relevant animation time remaining, and that's if there's, let's say, multiple animations that are sort of blending together in that previous state. It will take the time remaining on the most relevant animation. Or you can get the time remaining on the literal animation, the nav stop transition. In our case, that's probably what we want to do. You'll also notice that there's two options. You can get the ratio of the time remaining, like kind of a percentage. You could say like, hey, I want it to start when that animation is 50% done. Um, or you can get the literal time remaining in seconds. Um, so I'm actually gonna choose this latter one, the uh, literal time remaining, because then I can be a little bit more precise about when I want uh, this transition to kick in based off of how how much of the animation is remaining, okay? So now the question is, is like when in the animation do we actually want it to kick in? So let's go back here and look at our animation. Um, we probably want the blend to start kicking in right when, right around the time that our breathe idle actually starts, right? So if you think about it like this, in the idle state that's gonna be sort of crossfading into this, it's going to be starting its breathe cycle. And we wanna kind of have our blends, our cross blend happening basically at the same point in this stop animation that that breathe cycle starts, which is roughly around, mm, somewhere around frame 45, okay? So that leaves us 90 remaining frames here uh, to sort of uh, count back from. So what we wanna say is, if we do the math, like 90 frames is almost exactly three seconds. So what we wanna say is when there's about three seconds left in this animation, when there's about 90 frames left, we wanna start transitioning into our idle state, okay? So let's go ahead back here and build this. We're gonna say when there's when the time remaining on our Thor nav stop transition is uh, less than or equal to, so just to, just to catch it too, if it happens to like swing past it, when it's less than or equal to three, then you can enter this transition, okay? And we can kind of modify this later if this ends up being a little bit wonky. Okay, so let's go back up here now to our state machine. And we also can choose how long we want the duration of the blend to be. So we chose when we want the blend to start, and we can also choose here the duration that we want the cross fade to happen. So once again, think of it like video editing. You have two videos and they're kind of laying on top of each other, and you can choose sort of like how long and how soft you want that transition to actually be, as well as the starting point. We just chose the starting point, and now we gotta decide how long we actually want it to be. So. 0.2 seconds is what? That's about 10 frames-ish, which is maybe fine as a starting point, okay? Now, likewise, we probably wanna go back and look at this transition. 0.2 seconds here might be a little bit long because when we stop, we want you to actually stop and it feel like you, you know, suddenly stop and 0.2 seconds, 10 frames is a lot of time to blend between that run pose and this stop. So I'm gonna actually make this much shorter. Let's maybe make it 0.1 as a starting point. We can always modify these later. Now, uh, now that we have this rule, these rules built here, we can actually get rid of our old transition, okay? So let's compile this and save it and actually see if this works in game. So let's downsize this and hit play. And we will run around and then stop. And lo and behold, our stop animation plays beautifully. Look at that. We can look at it from a couple different angles. Now there's a little hitch there in our uh, blend back to idle. So it looks like we didn't quite perfectly line up or maybe we want to increase the, the duration of the crossfade between our stop and our idle so that that blends a little bit softer. Um, the other thing that I will note is that while I'm stopping, 
if I'm still in the, if I'm still stopping and I try to run again, it doesn't interrupt the stop, which makes sense because we did not build a transitional rule from the stop back to run. Okay, so we're gonna go back, we're gonna solve those two problems. We're first gonna solve the blend to idle. We're gonna soften it out by making that duration a little bit longer. And then we're gonna build this transitional rule from our stop back to run so that if we start running while we are stopping, we can actually start running again. So let's hit escape and go back to our animation blueprint. And let's deal with that idle one first. Now we actually have three seconds of total time that we could sort of crossfade here. So why not take advantage of that and let's make it like 2.5 seconds of blend to just make this blend back to here really, really soft. Since we're basically playing two copies of the animation parallel to each other, we can make this really long without really having to worry about it being uh, uh, kind of mushy at all. If anything, the mushiness will kind of help us in this uh, situation. Okay, and then we also want to build that rule from stop back to run. And that rule is actually going to be identical to this one. And because it's going to be exactly identical, we could copy, even though this is a simple thing, we could just copy it over, right? That would be easy. But there's a cool little feature you can do in here, which is called a shared transition rule. So in an instance where you want to reuse the same exact rule, you can actually kind of create a, uh, a like function rule and share it, reuse it over and over in these blend graphs, okay? So how we do that is we'll click on this one here and we can actually uh, say, promote this to a shared transition rule, okay? So we can say promote to shared and we can give it a name and let's just call this I mean, it literally only does one thing. It checks if you are moving. So we can say is moving, okay? Now you can separately create a shared transition blend setting. The rule and the blend settings are actually separate, okay? So if I re reuse this rule somewhere else on my graph, it's not necessarily going to copy over these same blend settings. You have to actually manage those separately, but I'm not too worried about that right now. Okay, so if I go down here now to this rule going, let me make sure I get the right one. It's stop to run. If you hover over it, it will show you. You see, stop to run. And we wanna go up to here now, and instead of saying promote to shared, we wanna say use shared and click is moving, okay? And you'll see that it automatically uh, uh, unified the color of them, and now all dark red uh, uh, transitions are representative of this is moving transition, okay? So let's go see, compile and save if we solved both of our problems. Okay, let's look first at the um, softness of the blend back to idle and see if there's any hitches in there now. Uh, there's still a little bit of a hitch in there. Um, I think it might just be that we're not starting the idle at the, ex ex we're not starting the transition at the exact starting spot where our idle sort of breathe animation actually started to kick in uh, in our stop. So we'll go back and do a little bit of research on that. Now let's see if we dealt with the stop situation. It looks like we did. So if you stop and then start running again, your character actually does stop and then immediately start running again, which looks pretty nice. Okay, so let's go do a tiny bit more research um, on that idle problem. Let's go back actually to Maya and look at and see exactly where we kicked in and started our idle animation so that we can sync up our breathe in Unreal with it perfectly. Oh, and actually the idle animation kind of starts playing here at frame 21, which, oh my goodness, we're gonna have to do a little bit of math here. Let's pull up our calculator the handy dandy frame calculator here. So let's do um, uh, 141 minus 21 equals 100. Oh, it actually came out to be exactly 120. I should have just done this math in my head. And so it's exactly four seconds. So we're kind of like a second off actually um, where we want our idle animation to kick in. So let's go back here to Unreal and change this time remaining to be four seconds. And we'll see if this fixes our problem. And likewise, we can kind of stretch out um, our blend time here to also be around four seconds. Let's make it 3.5 now and see if 
we kind of got rid of most of that little hitch in there. And let's see. And so now, now that we like did the math, actually did the math, it looks pretty perfect. Uh, now that we sunk up. So if you didn't understand what we just did there, essentially what I was trying to do was we have one full loop of that idle animation in our uh, in the end of our stop, right? That we animated in Maya. What I was trying to do was to try to get the crossfade back into our idle state to start at the exact same time in our animation that our idle loop starts to kick in. So that's why I was looking at this. And if we do that, what's essentially happening is those two idle animations are starting at the same exact time and just crossfading between each other, which got us a buttery, buttery smooth transition. Okay. So let's just look at it a couple more times to see if we see anything else that uh, looks off. Kind of let it play all the way out into idle. Looks pretty good. Let's kind of look at it from the forward view and back. All right, so that is it. Let's look lastly before we jump out at it actually working in real time here, like we did before. Okay, so you can see we're stopped, we're in the idle. Oh, we gotta watch the right character. So let's click over here and watch our third person character. Okay, um, so we're in our run animation and we stop and we have a four second transition out of it. You can actually see it literally counting down. If you kind of look at the uh, here, if we kind of zoom in and look, you can see the percentages as it's crossfading over as we stop. So it's 100% and then it starts counting towards the idle and away from the stop until it's eventually fully in our idle animation. And likewise, you can see that we stop and if we move again, it's cutting directly over there. Let me zoom back out a little bit to our run animation. And so everything seems to be working exactly as we intended, which is awesome. As with all things in game development, that took a little bit of problem solving to get exactly what we were looking for. But with a little bit of math and a little bit of know-how, we uh, got something that I think looks pretty good. Uh, and overall, I think it in improves the fidelity of the character quite a bit and adds a lot of believability to that stop that wasn't really there before. And you can kind of extrapolate at this point how adding transitions between lots of different motions in the game can get you something that looks really beautiful and really smooth. Now, as always, I like to kind of take a moment before moving on to the next project and go over my work with a little bit more of a fine tooth comb. So let's hop back into Unreal one last time and just sort of talk through some areas that we could maybe improve on this animation uh, to just make it really shine for the future. All right, here we are back in Unreal for the final time today. And we're gonna just look at this animation with a little eye for, of, of scrutiny to see if there's any areas that we can improve. Now, I kind of looked at it already and have some notes for myself, and I'll kind of explain to you some of my reasoning behind it. The first thing that I was noticing on the stop was that when it's going directly away from camera and looking particularly right at the butt of the character, which is very shiny, by the way, uh, that the the hips of the character just kind of go straight forward in one axis it's almost like a little punching bag going like this uh whereas the upper body has this sort of fluid nice natural feeling rotation to that it feels very disconnected from the lower body you don't see any of that in the hips you don't see any of that in that that butt pelvis area and you definitely don't see any of it in the legs so i think the first thing that i would do in maya is try to propagate some of that uh, torque that rotation from the upper body down through the hips and maybe even feather it into the knees a little bit so that they sort of, you know, have a little bit of twist out as well. Um, the second thing that I noticed uh, that I don't love is that the whole thing just feels a little bit gooey, slow, fluid. It feels very smooth, like it, 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 it feels like it blends well and everything that's not the problem the problem is, is that's not really the character that we have here we have this like tough guy 
and I would imagine that he would have a little bit more flourish. Um, so I think that what I would try to add is maybe the initial settle out is just this natural kind of slow into that forward pose. But then as the character sort of transitions back into their idle pose, we could push the spacing and the timing of it a little bit to get a little bit more snap. So you have something where the character kind of comes forward and then snaps into that final pose a little bit more like, you know? Um, Idle or stop animations are a, a really good and easy place to add a little bit of character personality because they're sort of a quiet, still moment on the character. And I think that this is particularly notable on that big heavy weapon there that's just sort of like bleh, swimming through space like it's underwater. And it would really benefit from having like a nice snap at the end of it, like the character's really re-gripping the weapon uh, and sort of tightening up, tensing up all the muscles there. Um, the, uh, I was trying to think if there was any other things. Um, I think the only other thing that kind of bothered me was from some of the views that this arm with the, uh, uh, mace in it comes so close to that leg there. I think I might like to sweep it out and around that leg a little bit more. Um, not only does it sort of almost hit the leg, but it kind of comes forward straight just in one axis as opposed to sort of arcing out around the body and sort of swinging around in front and then swinging around back. It just sort of feels like it's going in one axis like this. Um, and it's particularly most notable in when uh, the character stops right towards camera. Um, so I think just adding a little bit of a arc out and around the character and the same thing on the way back would really help it just feel a little bit more natural and fluid and other than that i don't have too much feedback i think i just have some polished points of maybe adding a little bit of animation to the fingers because they feel pretty stiff and maybe something on the face um, but that's all like extremely high polished stuff that we can add in later and that sort of wraps up the episode on transitional animations. We have some nice notes, a little bit of homework to polish up this animation into hopefully a nice little gem that will add a little bit of believability and a little bit of higher fidelity to our character. As I always suggest, this would be a great time to get some feedback yourself from another animator. It's always nice to self-critique your work, but I always find it's way more helpful to get some feedback from somebody else if possible. If you want a little bit more homework to work on, we built one transitional animation, but we actually have space in our graph even now for one other transitional animation, and that is the transition from idle to run. You could try your hand at building a little uh, run start animation, you know, have the character sort of lean forward and do a nice push off. Run starts can add a lot of uh, power and sort of push off feeling to your character, right? To, to sort of add some pizzazz to that moment where you push the forward button. Uh, that's a great place to start. And as we sort of flesh out the rest of this animation graph, you'll see me touch back on transitional animations over and over again, because they're a really powerful tool to just add a little bit of believability to your character. Well, I hope that you enjoyed building the stop animation with me. I had a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy animating.